I had some code which would take a frame object like this option group frame here and would identify anything within inside that frame. I could handle anything in that frame in the same way. It was a project I did where I created a option group without checkboxes. In other words, it had command buttons like this one instead of checkboxes. In this case, it's exactly the same. Instead of having several command buttons, I only need one. So the frame identifies that there's a command button in it. The frame here, the control source, is linked to the table. So that's it. I can get the information from the command button into the table through the frame that surrounds it. Now let's have a look at the actual form with the code running. So what's happening here? I'm clicking on the command button and it changes from the no or false image to the true image. Now remember we're on record number one in this table and field one which is if a sent. So we, that's now checked. So that should be true. So if we have a look in the table, we've got column one checked, the next column not checked, and then the next column checked. So how does this work? If we have a look at this command button, it has two click events, the on click event and the on double click event. And they call these two functions. And these are in the form. That means simulated button click and simulated button double click. So if we look at the code behind the form, we have got simulated button click and simulated button double click. And this is a class module which contains a function simulate button click and same class module simulate button double click. Also in the forms on current event, we also call the class module and run the function current event in the class module. But the current event runs when the form loads and you don't want it to run the code in that condition. So we say we have a custom property here which skips this if the load event is running. If this is true, it runs the on current event in the class module. But if this is false, it skips this call to the function current event in the class module and sets this, which when you load up, it would be false. But after the first run through, it sets it to true. So once the form's loaded, it doesn't do this. And then every time after that, now it does that because that's true. And the form load event sets the class module to a new class module there and it calls the setup function in the class module. But you don't really need to know all that. That's just an explanation of what's going on. All you need to know is you just need those two in your command button. Same, same for that one. This is command button 76. That's command button 82. That one there you just see is 78. It's got the same code in it. Now, as you can see, the com command button's got an option group frame around it. If I call up the property sheet, click on the option group frame, we can look here in the tag property. That's the information that tells the code in the class module what to do with this simulated checkbox here. And if we look in this one, we've got exactly the same piece of code. These are setup instructions for the simulated checkbox. That tells the code when it looks through and finds this frame, this frame here or this frame. This just lets it know that it's found the correct set of instructions and operates on. If it, that wasn't there, if it didn't have nifty option group in there, NOG, it would ignore this. This tells you where the images are. So in this case, the images are in the image folder. So you don't really need to know where this is. We can find where the access database is in code. We find that. All we need to know is if there's an image folder in the folder where the access database is and if there is we name it here so it knows to look in that folder for the images and the first image here is the tick and the second image is the cross the cancel cross and text 46 is where you want the focus to go after you've clicked on the checkbox and zero yes uh, tells it 
to always return a zero, never a null. And this tells the code that you're handling a checkbox situation, not a nifty option group. I'll show you this in a bit more detail because there's a copy of it in the code here. So this is basically what we've got. We had NOG, NOG, then we had the location of the images in that folder. In this case, the yes image, so that's the identifier, uh, is zero. One is the image folder. Two is the yes image file you want to display. Three is the no image file. Four is the next control. Where do you want the focus to go after you've clicked on the button? Five, set value to zero. You can have zero yes or zero no. And this is to tell you if number six tells you, do you want to display a star or a group? A star system or an option group? Actually, it's neither of those because uh, this is slightly out of date, this bit of code, because I've added now a checkbox. So checkbox will be an option in there as well, which is what we saw on the form. So I've briefly run through what that does. So you can change the name of your image folder to whatever you like there. So in this case, it's images. If I change that to a different name, close this, close that, I'm closing this form, do you want to save changes? Yes. If I open it, an error has occurred. The error in the UNC, but we're not likely really. See, you saw me change the name of the image folder. So the name of the image folder or the image file icon you are trying to load you may have missed about the name incorrectly but i have i added an x into it so that's what happens there okay so it just doesn't work so if i go back here and put it right take the x off the end of the image folder i'll see if it works it works fine now the image file has the correct name now things to note this button isn't round it would appear cross-shaped or round there but it's not if you look at it, it's a square button. That's a square button. You need to make sure the button fits nicely within this option group frame. If I call it the property sheet for it, so it's an option group frame. If I move that just slightly out of the frame, run it again, see it's not working. This error is usually caused when a button is not completely within the option group frame. There you go. So we design view, run that. That's fixed. So how to set this up in your own database? I'll quickly run through that. 